So I'm working with this group, Dash Hive, and one of the things we're doing is using the Dash Insight API to create a paper wallet tool. And so you get the benefit of me explaining how to install the Dash Insight API. Uh, if you Google it, you'll come up with a list of things. Uh, the most, it seems like the most popular of which is this Medium article here. And the guy does a really good job of putting everything together, but a little bit of it is uh, outdated or you might come into some, some uh, uh, problems as you try to follow the instructions where like a, a step is missing or there's a typo or something. Um, no big deal, but we just decided to make an install script that will install both uh, the, the Dash daemon that has the full blockchain as well as the Insight uh, API that's written in Node. So um, here, I'll just show you real quick in the script. There's kind of this, this bit here where if you've already got our version of the, of the Dash daemon installed, it's going to go ahead and skip it. Um, and then continue on. If you don't, then it's going to install it. Now this is important because even if you've got it installed, there's custom dependencies, there's custom paths that have to be configured. So, so even if you weren't going to use our um, uh, Dash daemon, you'd still want to let it install it and then just disable uh, disable it afterwards because the dependencies and stuff have to be linked in as, as compiled node modules. So um, let me, uh, if you watched the last video, I've got a DigitalOcean VPS set up, um, running screen on it. I'm just gonna reattach, and the reason I run screen is if I'm on a poor Wi-Fi connection or something, it gets cut off and I'm in the middle of a long process or I'm editing a document or whatever, I just wanna be able to get back to it real quickly. So that's what screen lets you do, kind of resume your shell where you were at over a network. So what I'm gonna do is just clone uh, this very repository here. Actually, let me get out. I'm still in the old directory from the previous video I was doing there. So I'm gonna go ahead and clone this, and then I'm going to uh, move into that directory that I just created from, from this uh, cloned repository. Even though it's .sh, it's actually a folder. I just have a thing where I've started to put extensions on the end of my repositories to be able to more easily distinguish like what type of repository it is. Oh, And uh, I'm going to run this installer. This will just take a minute or two. It's, uh, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, unless you don't already have the dash daemon installed, in which case it has to recompile. And that can take uh, about 20 minutes um, on one of these VPSs. You can see here it was, it's doing a little bit of that. Um, native C compiling that I was talking about, in this case for ZMQ. And now it's finished installing, all the compiling's done, and uh, you may or may not have noticed uh, what looked like some errors. Let's see if I can scroll back to it. But uh, in any case, sometimes those are normal and you can just ignore them as long as it finishes with uh, creating the Dash Insight service. So, things that you need to know once it is installed. If you want to uninstall it, it's under opt-pay slash bitcore primarily. Um, maybe this is there though. Okay. And then here you would change the RPC host, port, password, user, etc to what you have in your um, dash config for the dash daemon. Which I need to change because I did in my previous tutorial. So, whoops, that's not what I wanted to do. So I'll just paste that in here. And then I'm going to look at what system, no, journal control has to say about whether or not the service started. What did I say over here? Dash insight, that makes more sense anyway. Okay, so it looks like it started and now that I have changed the password, I probably need to restart it. And then I'll 
watch the logs to see what happens. All right, looks like it got a valid connection. So if all went well, then both the API and the UI should be installed. I believe the default port is 3001. Good. And then if I do slash insight, here we are. And although this has been running for a while, it looks like it is still downloading the blockchain. It doesn't look like it's finished yet. I think I set this up about an hour ago. Um, and like I was saying before, um, if you were running this on a system where you expect to connect remotely to an instance of the Dash daemon, so maybe you're running on a system that doesn't have a good 40 gigs of disk space and you're, you're connecting to the RPC of, of some other system for the actual blockchain information, um, what you would do here is do system control disable dash D and I don't actually want to do that so I'm going to turn it back on but that's just what you would do um, this is what it looks like so if you were if you were to look into the service file um, this is set up. It's automatically going to install it as a service. It's it's going to work on most Linux systems. Um, particularly, it's been tested on Ubuntu and it, System D. If it doesn't have System D, which is what most Linux systems these days have, then it wouldn't work. But even on the Raspberry Pi, they have System D now, I believe. So anyway, oh, what happened? Okay, here we are. Uh, so if I wanted to run this manually to see to be able to like not have to view log files, but actually see like it popping up in front of my Face and see what's happening. Um, and this is what I would run. Um, and then I think I need to just update the documentation here. We already default to using the main network rather than the test network. Um, and that's out of date too. That's fine. And then uh, the troubleshooting section here, I, I pretty much ran into every problem that you can run into during this. So um, if you are going through the steps manually, hopefully just in Googling, if you've had an error, you come across this. Uh, but in the general case, that installer should work for you. You should get the Insight API. And let's just see if we can uh, find... I, I'm just going to test the API. I think this is an, an older block I give in the example, so maybe I'll get lucky and it'll load. Eh, no, but anyway the API is working so once um, the blockchain is finished downloading then I'll have um, all of the up-to-date information and yeah so like I said we try to to get all the edge cases and create some install scripts that really just dumb it down to the point where if you can set up a VPS and bash install the script, I mean of course feel free to look through it and make sure that you know there's nothing that you disagree with in here, but this one's uh, fairly short and simple um, it's basically just installing node and then um, setting up the, the the larger part would be if it's setting up the dash daemon and then custom compiling against um, the same dependencies particularly I think libzmq so there you are and you can see that um, I was able to you know install it and it works so you should be able to too if you have any problems please open up an issue